Hello, uh, this is Matt Singer. I'm the arts and culture editor at Willamette Week. And my guest today is somebody who needs very little tool uh, introduction, most places, but particularly not in Portland. Uh, Carrie Brownstein, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you via yeah. the internet, which is how you meet everyone these days. Right, this is, uh, usually I say nice to e-meet you, but I mean, how else are you gonna meet anybody? You know, so th this is meeting. This is the real way now. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us. I really appreciate it. Um, maybe you could start by telling me, what do you remember when kind of all this started and when you had to sort of go into quarantine, kind of what was going on in your life, you know, two and a half months ago? Sure. Well, it was interesting because Slater Kinney, um, the band that I play in, we were on tour in Europe. And as we all know, it, you know, things, obviously after China, uh, Italy was sort of the next hot spot. And we were in mainland Europe. We never went to Italy, but we were in France and in Germany. And then we, we went over to the UK. And, you know, that was in mid and late February. And everything still felt very um, vague and abstract and like something that was happening elsewhere. Uh, but when we flew home right at the beginning of March, I remember leaving from Amsterdam and the airport was very strange. You know, people were starting to wear masks and our flight, you know, usually international flights are pretty crowded or sold out and there were fewer people on it. And so when I got here, um, I definitely had a sense that something was brewing and we, I was supposed to go to South by Southwest for something. And I remember telling my friend who lives in Austin, I think the festival will be canceled. And she said, there's no way. And then, so I think what I remember is just this, this strange turning point. Everything just felt so quick, you know, it, it happened so rapidly once it was starting. And I think, um, so I settled in pretty quickly, I think, just having been in Europe and sort of seeing things start to take shape there. Uh, I, I went to the grocery store and stocked up and kind of missed some of the, the frenzied um, bin shopping, which I never really did, but I did stock up on dry goods. I did not hoard toilet paper. So what have you been, been doing now uh, to sort of uh, pass the time and keep yourself sane the last two months? Yeah, well, I think like many people, I had a lot of really high-minded things. Like I thought, oh, this is the, the I'll be really productive. You know, um, I am supposed to be, and I am, occasionally working on a screenplay, but what I've really been doing is things like making uh, banana bread, uh, repainting uh, my front porch, uh, restaining and sanding a front door, cleaning out closets, um, becoming a better cook, uh, going on a lot of walks to stay sane. Uh, but the thing that I guess I'm most proud of is um, myself and a Portland artist named Harold Fletcher, and a woman named Salty, um, uh, she, uh, Jai Ying from Shanghai and this guy, Eric Johnson, we made this website called the Green New Real, which um, kind of addresses the nexus of, of climate change and, and coronavirus and that. So that happened, but that, that was definitely the most productive thing I've done. And it's with the help of a lot of other people. <laughs> what have you, since you're in Portland, what have you noticed about uh, how Portland has reacted uh, to this crisis? We are, we're a bunch of rule followers, I think, for the most part. I, I, I mean, I, I found that talking to people on the West Coast, it seems like, you know, tend to like have a strong belief in science, have faith in our, um, for the most part, faith in our um, political leaders and definitely faith in you know, doctors and the well-being of others. Um, so that I've, I've definitely seen that. But I, the thing that I really noticed is French or front porch and front yard hangs. You know, most of us that live in, I mean, obviously it's different if you live in an apartment, but most people who live in a house, you make your backyard a place that you want to hang out. It's private. And all of a sudden I started seeing these like lawn chairs out in the front. And I, sometimes when I go on a walk, I feel like I'm just like, 
part of a parade for other people, mm -hmm. especially early on when there was just this sense of like loneliness and isolation and we weren't sure when we were going to have access to people. I just really started noticing people, they would put the chairs as close to the front grass strip as possible, just, just for that little ounce of communication, that little, that little hello. And so, yeah, I've seen a lot, a lot of um, front yard dwelling. So, you know, it's going to be a long time before you or pretty much any other musician is performing on a stage in front of a crowd again. What, and I mean, I think that that's how we're going to almost know we're officially out of this is when people are in a club again, watching a band. I mean, that'll be like the last thing that happens. Yes. What effect in a long term do you feel like that is going to have on music culture? Is this a, you know, is this going to lead to a permanent change or is this just kind of like a aberration and a blip and then things will return to normal? I mean, it's so hard to prognosticate right now because I, I do feel like there are some potentially deleterious effects, you know, it, whether it's small independent venues closing or, you know, I think of, I mean, a, a musician is, it's a tenuous career to begin with. And if you think about not only the musicians, but the people who go on tour, or work in clubs. I mean, this is just an infrastructure that feels very fragile. Um, I hope that like a lot of things, it reminds us of the value of those kinds of in-person experiences that I think, you know, the only option, right? The only option right now are sort of live streams or, you know, maybe someone plays a song on like Instagram live or IGTV or something, but you just can't really re replicate or replace, you know, standing in a, a venue with your friends and, and listening to live music and having it kind of permeate you on a cellular level. So I don't know. I, but I, I agree that it will be a long time coming and probably one of the first indicators of normalcy. But I think my bigger worry is that like to even frame anything as normal, like we will, we have to redefine what that's going to be. So I don't know how it will come back or what it will look like, but I hope it's a semblance of what it was before. So, you know, it seemed like this um, album cycle for Slater Kinney was, uh, at least from the outside, was particularly tumultuous with Janet leaving. And then now, you know, you were supposed to go on tour with uh, Wilco this summer, and I'm pretty sure that's out the window. Um, <laughs> So where does this leave Slater Kinney? It leaves us in a place where we just need to keep writing and looking towards the future. Corn and I have been writing. Um, first we were writing together and now we're sort of writing in a socially distanced way, which is, which is fine, not ideal, but, but it works. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it leaves us and it's not that different because aside from not being probably not being able to to tour with <laughs> with on the Wilco uh, tour this summer, um, you know, we would have probably started writing again anyway. But I it it's definitely hard to imagine, you know, what what the future looks like, you know, going back to your other question. So that it I think it's a strange time to, to write anything. Um, and maybe you're in a, a different position because there's a lot of people are reading the Willamette Week and other local news sources for information and also for a sense of connection. But I think in terms of those bigger things where you're punting the deadline or, you know, like when it's released, you're like, what is it? What am I releasing this into? What world, like what mindset, you know, it kind of feels like you're writing for Martians or some species that we don't really understand like the psyche of. So yeah, there, that's, there's kind of a difficulty with that. So it's a, it's a weird time. Um, you know, Janet's departure was surprisingly acrimonious, it seemed, for a lot of fans. Where is that relationship now? Yeah, that's just not, I don't, I just think there was so much energy spent on that narrative that was such a just a distraction that I'm not really interested in talking about it. So what has being in isolation taught you about yourself that you... Maybe you didn't already know. Well, I'm, it's definitely reminded me that I'm an introvert. I think that my introvert friends have weathered this in a different way than my friends who are extroverted and who glean energy from 
social interactions. But I think it's also, for me, reminded me and, and placed a value on on my friendships and on, you know, in some ways, even people who I wouldn't normally see, like people who live in other cities, like I've connected more with them during this time than I normally would have. So I feel like it's definitely amplified that importance of just maintaining connection with friends and checking in. And, you know, ideally you do that without a pandemic. Um, I think it's also showcased for me just how little I need, you know, that it really just boils down to, you know, friendship and feeling, you know, loved and like being able to cook for myself. There's certain like a certain resilience that kind of sets in and you just, you know, a lot of the sort of superfluous like noise kind of goes away and you just think, oh, this is, this is fine. I don't, I don't need as much as I thought I did, whether that's like certain kind of external stimulus or, you know, consumer goods or anything, you know, there's very little things sort of in the consumer world that I miss. I think it's experiences that I miss. Like I don't miss like going to a restaurant because like I'm too lazy to cook. I miss going to a restaurant because it feels great to sit in a room full of people and have you know, support a restaurant where someone feels really passionate about the food they cook and, you know, and you're, a, you're there's a din of noise, like you sort of miss these experiential things. And um, I think that's, that's been good to remember that it's so much more about that than, oh, I wish I could run to the store and buy this thing. <laughs>